Aren't you glad to know he's a chain breaker? Amen. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, I want you to open with me to St. John chapter 3. St. John chapter 3 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. You know, I'm thankful for the chain breaker. I'm thankful for Jesus. That's one of those songs when it comes on my radio in the truck, I let my windows down and crank it up. I mean, I figure if the world can crank theirs up, you know, it's funny, I can pull up to the red light and they'll have a radio blaring and it's vibrating my truck, glory to God. I, I don't know if y'all have ever experienced that. I have. I've been sitting beside them before and they'll be boom, boom, boom. And my truck's sitting there going boom, boom. Oh, my word. They get excited over their music. I can get excited over mine. Amen. He is a chain breaker. I want to speak to you for just a few moments on fathers who speak Jesus. But this isn't just to the fathers, but I think fathers should be the leaders. I believe fathers were meant to be the head of the house. I believe fathers should lead their family in worship. I believe one of the problems we have in America today is we don't have fathers stepping up to bat like they ought to. Fathers, <laughs> mamas shouldn't be having to speak Jesus for you. You ought to be speaking Jesus for your wife and for your children. Every night when I lay down in the bed, whether my wife has already went to bed or not, whether she's asleep or not, it does not matter. When I lay down on the bed, the first thing I do before I even put my CPAP on or do anything else, the first thing I do is I reach over and I lay my hand on my wife and I give thanks to God for her and I bless her in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something, church. We need fathers who will speak Jesus. Amen. In John chapter 3, beginning with verse 16 through 18, very familiar passage of Scripture to most people. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who believes who he does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. What name is that? Jesus. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 through 12, I'm reading from the New Living Translation this time. Don't you remember, dear brothers and sisters, how hard we worked among you, Night and day we told to earn a living so that we would not be a burden to any of you as we preached Jesus to you. You yourselves are our witnesses, and so is God, that we are devout and honest and faithful toward all who, all you believers. And you know that we treated each of you as a father treats his own children. We plead with you, encourage, we pleaded with you and encouraged you and urged you to live your lives in a way that Jesus would consider worthy. For Jesus called you to share in his kingdom and glory. Father, I'm so thankful for your son, Jesus. And if there's anything the world needs today, it is your son, Jesus. And Father, I pray that we would speak Jesus. Father, for we need Jesus more than anything else. Lord, I pray now your blessings upon this message, and I pray that you would speak, that our ears would be open, and that you would receive from us the word of God. Father, as, we, as I speak this word, that you would speak through me, that your children may receive it in their hearts and their minds. And Father, we'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the honor and all the glory in Christ Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen and amen. Fathers who speak Jesus, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm not going to be withhold you but just a moment or two, and I want to tell you, I want us to hear something from Jesus today. 
I believe one of the greatest tragedies has come across in America and come across our churches is simply we've taken Jesus out of the church and out of the world. People don't want to speak the name of Jesus. We're concerned about offending other people. But I want to tell you, we need people who will speak Jesus. We need fathers in their homes who will speak Jesus over their families and over their marriage and over their wives and over their children. We need fathers who will speak Jesus in their lives, over their jobs, over their finances, over their health and everything that they do. We need fathers who will stand up and lead the way and speak Jesus. What we need is churches who will begin to speak Jesus again. We live in a world today where Jesus has become an offense word to the world. We live in a time where the word Jesus has become offensive to many people and people don't want you to speak Jesus. They don't want you to say Jesus. They don't want you to talk to Jesus or pray to Jesus. They don't want you to talk about Jesus. In fact, it's amazing to me, but the school systems today, they'll let you talk about anything you want to talk about, but when you start talking about Jesus, they want you to hush. They want you to stop. Our teachers are told you cannot talk about Jesus to a child, but if a child asks you, you can answer, but be very careful how you answer the name Jesus to your children. Why? But if that child comes up to you and talks to you about Satan, it's okay to talk about Satan. If that child comes up to you and talks about Buddha, it's okay to talk about Buddha. If that child comes up and talks to you about Muhammad, it's okay to talk about Muhammad. But don't talk about Jesus. There's something wrong when we come to a place in America today where the word Jesus has become a word that no one wants to say because it might offend somebody. But it's time we speak Jesus again. Can somebody say amen? If there's any word we need in a song, it's Jesus. Did you have you noticed that many of our songs today, the new songs that come out, are very generic and very a uh, 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 a roundabout way of saying God, so it's not offensive. In other words, you can sing that song in any religion because of the way they word it. Because you don't hear the name Jesus in the song, you don't hear the blood of Jesus or the blood of Christ in the song. Have you noticed that there's a lot of songs today that they come out? They don't say anything about Christ or Jesus. It's God this and God that, which is fine. We're singing it to our God, but the people down the street are singing it to their God, and their God ain't our God. Hello? Have you noticed that? They've become very generic in the way they do them. Why? Because we don't want to upset people when we sing about Jesus. But I want to tell you something, church. We need to speak Jesus again in the church. We need to speak Jesus again in our song. We need to speak Jesus again in our lives. We need to speak Jesus again in everything that we do. Can somebody say amen? I come to tell you today, if you don't hear anything else, hear this. Begin to speak Jesus and see what Jesus will do in your heart and in your life. Can somebody say amen? Oh, but pastor, if we speak Jesus, it's going to upset somebody. It's going to upset the devil, I know. And it's going to upset the world, I know. But we need to speak Jesus again. Amen. Come on, church. If the President of the United States can get on our in our in our White House and can get up there and hold a parade and have women making their tops off on national TV with him standing beside her and taking pictures with them, I want to tell you something. It's time we in America stand up and say Jesus again. Can somebody say amen? Pastor, what you talking about? Uh, honey, my wife this morning, uh, this week, she was on flip on Fox News. She didn't know what was going on. She turned on Fox News at work uh, because she had some break time, and she just on her computer hit Fox News or on her phone, and glory to God, when she turned it on, all of a sudden, all she saw was a woman with her with, with a shadow covering her breast up because she was naked, with the pre and she was turning it off because she was afraid that she had got some kind of strange website, and it was Fox News, uh, and she was like, Nathan, I was trying to turn it off. I was afraid they was going to think I was looking at something inappropriate. I said, no, baby. I said, that happened at the White House. Our president of the United States hosting a gay and lesbian and whatever, thing, whatever else they are. I don't know what they call themselves anymore. They got so many acronyms. But all of them up there, and they were all lifting their, getting undressed and with him and promoting this. And, of course, they come out afterward and said, we didn't plan that, but he sure took a picture with it. But then they want to get offended with me if I preach Jesus. They want to get offended with me if I tell people Jesus is the only way to heaven. 
They want to get upset with me when I say that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can go to the Father except through Jesus. They don't want you to preach Jesus. They want you to tone it down. They don't want you to sing about Jesus. They want you to tone it down. They don't want you to tell people about Jesus. But I've come to tell you today, church, the one thing this world needs today more than anything else is Jesus. Can somebody say amen? Now, I'm not going to hold you long, but I want to tell you something, church. We need to go back to a fundamental basic in our relationship with God and in the church. We need dads and moms, and we need, every, in fact, everybody that will start standing up and speaking Jesus. Another one of my favorite songs is I Speak Jesus. When that comes on, I turn my radio all the way up. Glory to God. I don't just turn it up a little bit. I turn it all the way up, let open every window, the back window, and open the sunroof. Glory to God. And when it gets to the part that says shout Jesus from the house. I'm going shout Jesus riding down the road because I believe we're living in a world that is sin sick and on its way to hell and we need to speak Jesus again because there's no way we're going to save the world. There's no way we're going to have revival. There's no way we're going to turn it around until we begin to speak Jesus one more time. Can somebody say amen? Speak Jesus. We need to learn to speak Jesus. Why is it important? Well, Timothy, Paul told Timothy, he said, nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. Jesus knows those who are his. Jesus knows those who are his. And let everyone who names the name of Christ. What is the name of Christ? Jesus. Let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Philippians 2, 9 through 11 said, therefore God also highly exalted Jesus and has given Jesus the name which is above every name that the name at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and those of the earth and those under the earth that every tongue would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Can I tell you today church there is a name that needs to be on our lips there is a name that we need to speak it is the name Jesus. We can speak everything else, but the world wants us to shut up about Jesus. Why? Because the devil doesn't want people to hear about Jesus. Why? Because Jesus will still save. Jesus will still deliver. Jesus is the name that ne above all names. It's a name that still makes the devil tremble. It's a name that demons fear. It's a name that we need to hear again in the church. It's a name we need to hear again in the world. It's a name that ought to be on our lips every day. The name of Jesus. Who is the chain breaker? His name is Jesus Christ. And he only he can break every chain. I said only he can break every chain that is binding this world and causing us to go down a road of destruction. Honey, you want to turn the world around? You want to see a difference in the White House? Honey, get Jesus back in the group. Can somebody say amen? Until we speak Jesus again, we're in trouble until we speak Jesus. I was actually told this at a seminar. They made this statement. They said, if you want to make your church grow faster and you want to have a bigger church, they said you can still have it. But when you get on the air and when you get online and when you get to your main service, do things don't sing or te speak or talk about the blood and don't sing or talk about Jesus. Be more generic. You know why? They said the younger generation will accept it if you don't sing or talk about the blood. I said, my God, the younger generation needs to hear about the blood of Jesus, the blood that washes away our sins, the blood that takes away our sins and iniquity. We need to preach Jesus to the world. That's what's wrong with the world today. You can grow a group of people if you do it by the formula but I come to tell you I'm not worried about growing a group of people I'm not worried about some formula what I'm worried about is people dying and going to hell and they need to hear about Jesus and the blood that still cleanses and makes us white as snow I want to tell you we used to sing about the blood all the time 
There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. We used to talk about the blood of Jesus. We'll wash away your sins. We used to sing about Jesus. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. We used to use his name all the time. But we've gotten generic. Why? Because the world wants us to quit talking about Jesus. You know why? The devil's afraid. We're going to influence the world. You're right. We will influence the world, devil, if we get Jesus back in the world. Can somebody say amen? In Acts chapter 4, verses 10, the Bible said, And let it be known to you all, to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by Jesus this man stands here before you whole. And this is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there any nor is there salvation in any other but Jesus. For under no other name in he under heaven given among men by which men can be saved but the name Jesus. I've come to tell somebody today, you can't get saved, you can't get delivered, you can't get help, you can't get hope, you can't get a blessing without Jesus. You want Jesus to work, work in your life? You want Jesus to fix your life? Then speak Jesus over. When's the last time you spoke Jesus? And I'm not talking about when you were saying the break prayer over your breakfast. You know what we teach them? God is great. God is good. Let us thank him by, for our food. By his hands we are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Amen. Wonderful prayer. I learned it as a kid. My grandboys learned it as a child. That's a great prayer. But you don't hear anything about Jesus. Hello? Well, we know who we're talking about, Pastor. I understand. But the guy down the street that's praying that prayer, he don't believe in Jesus. There's people out there today that pray to God all the time that don't believe in Jesus. There's churches out there today that are teaching about God, but they don't believe in Jesus. Glory to God. They'll tell you everything about the world, but they don't believe in Jesus. They'll tell you everything that God does and everything about the Bible, but they don't believe in Jesus. They take Jesus out of the Bible. In fact, there is a Bible that has been printed and put out in which Jesus is not named. His name is called the child of God. They don't even call him the son of God anymore because they don't want to offend the homosexual community. So they call him the child of God. There's something wrong when we begin to take the Word of God and we try to take out uh, who Jesus is uh, and we try to promote something that's different. I want to tell you something, church. I, <laughs> glory to God. We need to go back a little bit in our prayer lives and in our, our study lives uh, and in what we are and who we are and go back to what mom and dad taught us and realize there is a name that is above every other name and it is the name of Jesus. Uh, and we need to speak the name of Jesus. Can somebody amen? I wish somebody would speak Jesus. Oh, come on, you didn't hear us. I wish somebody would speak Jesus. It's a name you need to get on your lips today. When we speak the name of Jesus, do you know what we're saying when we say the name of Jesus? Do you even understand what it means when we speak the name of Jesus? When we speak Jesus, think about this for a moment. When we speak Jesus, we are saying this. When we speak Jesus, we're saying Jesus is. He is Emmanuel, God with us. When we speak Jesus, we're saying Jesus is the first begotten of the dead. He is the only begotten of the Father. He is the gift of God. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the Lamb of God. He is the Lamb that was slain. I wish somebody would speak Jesus. Amen. When we speak Jesus, we are saying that Jesus is. He is the horn of salvation. He is the faithful witness. He is holy and true. He is the Holy One of God. He is the lawgiver. He is our advocate with the Father. He is the mediator between God and men. He is our Redeemer. He is our, the Savior of the world. He is Christ the Messiah, our Lord and Savior. I wish somebody would speak Jesus this morning. Amen. When we speak Jesus, you know what we're saying? We're saying Jesus is. He is the bright and morning star. He is our counselor. He is our deliverer. He is our hiding place. He is our God and our Savior. He is our resurrection and life. He is the image of God. He is the king of glory. He is the day star. He is our hope. He is the good master. I wish somebody would speak Jesus. Amen. When we speak Jesus, we're saying that Jesus is. He is the 
Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the Word made flesh. He is the Word of life. He is the light that shines in darkness. He is the chief cornerstone. He is the foundation of the world. He is the head of the church. He is our great high priest. He is the rose of Sharon. He is the lily of the valley. He is the light of the world. He is the amen of my hope. I wish somebody would speak Jesus in this place. When we speak Jesus, you know what we're saying? We're saying Jesus is. Glory to God. He is the author and the finisher of my faith. He is the bread of life. He is the water of life springing up within us. He is the door of the sheep. He is the good shepherd. He is the bridegroom coming for his bride. He is the true vine. I wish somebody would speak Jesus in this place today. When we speak Jesus, you know what we're saying? We're saying Jesus is the rock that the church is built on. He is the rock that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. He is the redeemer of the lost. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man goeth to the Father except through him. He is the resurrection in life. He is the prince of peace. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is king of kings and lord of lords. He is he is, he is the word of God. I wish somebody would speak Jesus. I wish somebody would stand up and speak Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. We shut down a condol of us. Shut a little bit of shun of the eye. What happens when we speak Jesus? When we speak Jesus, Satan trembles. When we speak Jesus, demons flee. When we speak Jesus, yokes of bondage are broken. When we speak Jesus, people are delivered. When we speak Jesus, sickness is healed. When we speak Jesus, lives are changed. When we speak Jesus, relationships are restored. When we speak Jesus, the lost are found and souls are saved. I wish somebody would speak Jesus. We will not see America revived or moved until the church in America rises up and begins to speak Jesus again. You have to come help me. In fact, just bring your praise team and your musicians with you. He loves it when I do this kind of stuff. There is no name above any other name. There's a song called I Speak Jesus. Woo! I want to read something to you. Listen to this. It starts out, it kind of, kind of mellow, I guess. I don't know how to say it. It starts out. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. But listen to this. Over every heart and every mind. Y'all didn't hear me. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind. Can you get that song? It says, because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Mm. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Listen to this. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Because your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the darkness. Woo. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety. 
captivity to every soul held captive by depression. Did you know the leading sickness or problem in America today is no longer as of 2022. The leading problem in America has no longer heart disease. It is no longer diabetes, but it is depression. More people are dying from suicide and, dep and depression caused illnesses because they cannot get over their problem. They are depressed. But I want to tell you, it's time we speak the name over depression depression you can't have my wife depression you can't have my children depression you can't have my grandchildren depression you're not going to get in my life I speak Jesus and Jesus will come into your life help captive because your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold shine through the shadows Burn like a fire. This is the part I like to open up all my windows on. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the street. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus. Woo! You know, I got a neat feature in my truck. It is, I, I didn't know I had it. I stumbled across it by accident. Brother Stephen, it's the greatest feature they ever put in a vehicle. You can click on the dash thing up there and click to the stereo part of it. And there's a little button that will allow you to repeat either the whole song or part of the song. I love that button. I found it by accident. And Brother Joe, I found it, and when I get to this part, I hit the repeat button over this part. I repeat the whole song two or three times, but when I get excited, driving down the road in my truck, I hit this part, and I repeat it, and I got every window open. I, I got the back window open. I got the, I got the sunroof open all the way back. Glory to God for both seats. I got everything going so you can hear it, and I'm going down the road. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus from the street. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Shout Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name, Jesus, and I start it again. Why? Because I come to tell you something today, church. Until we speak Jesus again, we will not be victorious. But I come to tell somebody today, if you'll speak Jesus over whatever's going on in your life, God will take care of it. You can quit worrying about it. You can put it to rest. Jesus has got it. Jesus can deliver. Jesus can heal. Jesus can set free. Jesus can move in your situation. Just speak Jesus I did good today he could sing that one. find him the words for the screen buddy I speak that to Jesus because I'm going to tell you something I believe this morning God's about to do something I come here with a made up mind this morning I wasn't going to leave until I spoke Jesus over some situations. Until I spoke Jesus over some issues. And I'm going to speak Jesus. I want you to stand with me all over this house if you're able. Some of you come in here thinking the same old, same old. And if Jesus is speaking to you and you've got to quit playing or singing, that's fine. We can do it a cappella. My son's good. He, he, can, he can sing it standing on one foot with one hand raised in there if he needs to. I just come to speak the name of Jesus. And that's more important than anything else. But some of you come this morning for the same old, same old, but you ain't going to leave with the same old, same old. Now, you may leave out of here like you came. That's your fault. But some of you, you're going to speak Jesus. I wish somebody would speak Jesus right now. There's some of you, you need to speak Jesus over your own life. There's something in your life, and you know it, and you know what? I don't I don't want anybody to tell me anything this morning. You hear what I said? I don't need you to tell me anything. You need to just speak it to Jesus. You just need to speak it to Jesus. You just need to say Jesus and let him do it. Because Jesus is the one to save us. Lord, have mercy. Can I tell you all, oh, glory to God. 
I'm starting to feel like preaching another one. You know there's a story in the Bible about a prodigal son. How many of you ever read that story? You ever heard that story? We mess up a lot of times. Ooh, glory to God. On that story. The prodigal son got his own self in his, that situation. And people say, why didn't the father go get him? Because he knew where the father was. He had to make a mind to come back to the father. You want Jesus to move in your life? You got to make yourself back to Jesus. But the Bible said the father prayed for his son. Woo! He spoke Jesus over his son. The son came home. And the son said, I am not worthy. But the father forgave the son and said, we're going to have a celebration. Let me tell you something, church. Jesus said, go to John chapter 16 and 17. St. John chapter 16 and 17. The Bible said, and Jesus said, Jesus, I pray for them that you have given me and them who are a far off do you know who was far off yet was? That was me. That was me. That was me. That was you, Sister Virginia. Jesus was praying for disciples, but the far off yet bunch was us. He was saying those that hadn't been born yet, those that hadn't come, I'm praying for them. Jesus prayed for us. And if Jesus prayed for you, don't you think it's time you just give it back to Jesus and say, Jesus, I need you to take care of it. I want to tell you, some of you need to speak Jesus over your own life. Some of you need to speak Jesus over your marriage. Some of you need to speak Jesus over your children or your grandchildren. I want to tell you, that prodigal son or daughter, don't you give up on them. You don't know how, Pastor, it's been a long time. Let me tell you something. They may have not yet got in the pig pen yet, but God's got a way of letting them get in the pig pen and bringing them back home. If you'll keep speaking Jesus over them, Jesus will bring them back. Don't give up. Don't you quit. Speak Jesus every day over that child. Speak Jesus every day over that situation. Speak Jesus every day of your life. Some of you, you're so messed up with your job, be honest. You get up and go through the drudgery of it. You know what? You need to speak Jesus over that work situation right now. Right now, you need to just speak Jesus over it. Jesus, I'm going to speak your holy name over this situation. Glory to God. You know what? Jesus may not change your work situation, but he may change you to your work situation. Woo! I'm going to speak the name of Jesus. I've got to speak Jesus over some healing. I've got to speak Jesus over some deliverance. There's some that are bound in bondage. We're going to speak Jesus over them. But this morning, I want to tell you, if you want God to move, just is about to start singing. And if you will step out and come this morning, I'm going to pray with you. All you got to do is speak Jesus. You just got to, I don't, you don't need to tell me a thing. You just need to speak Jesus over that situation. But if you'll step out this morning and speak Jesus, I promise you, you're going to see God. God do something that you haven't seen before. Why? Because when you speak the name of Jesus, my Lord, you know why the devil wanted to hinder this service this morning? You know why we had so many distractions at the start? Because he knew I was going to be talking about speak Jesus. I'm going to shout Jesus before we leave. They're going to sing that song and when they get to the end of it, if you ain't praying, you better be singing and say, shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the street. I want to tell you, it's time we lift up the name of Jesus and sing what God will do. Most of you here know the health issues I went through. Still facing some. I went to bed last night speaking Jesus. After I spoke Jesus over my wife, I spoke Jesus over me. tell you something. When this all started with me, the devil said, you can believe what you want to. I had a dream. And in that dream, the devil come and spoke to me. He said, 
I'll either kill you or shut you up. The pain got so bad, I was sitting at a table with Brother Denny, Barnard, and my sister Carrie in the back, right before I went to the hospital, hit his church. And it hit me so bad, I couldn't hardly speak, I couldn't hardly move. When they took me to the hospital, I was in such pain that I couldn't even function. And the devil, it came back to my mind, that dream. The devil said, I'm going to kill you or I'm going to shut you up. Do you know what the neurologist told me when I finally got in to see the neurologist? He said, you have trigeminal nerve disease and you have a growth in your sinus cavity. They didn't know at that time they thought it was cancer. And he said, you need to face the facts, preacher. You probably will have to quit preaching because we can't do anything about that pain unless we go in there and do laser surgery. I got a second opinion. So I went to Jacksonville to Mayo. They went in and took that growth out. It was 1.3 centimeters in diameter and almost two centimeters long in here. I couldn't breathe on this side. They took it out, the pressure's gone. It was not cancer, praise God. But I saw the neurologist down there. I just saw the neurologist again this past week. It relieved the pressure, preacher, but you're probably going to have to give up preaching. That ain't, that ain't happening. He said, we cannot control the pain. It will get worse and worse. If you do surgery, you will probably be paralyzed on the right side of your face for the rest of your life. That's what they told me. John, I was hurting this morning. And I'll be honest with you, I hurt right now. I said, I'm not doing the surgery. I'm not doing it. But I speak Jesus over it, Satan. I speak Jesus. Why I'm telling you that? I went to bed last night speaking Jesus. Last night, I had another dream. But this time, it wasn't the devil telling me he was going to kill me or shut me up. This time, I was preaching. And the house of the church was full and overflowing. And God was moving in the altar. And you believe what you want to. But it was just like I heard Jesus speak to me and said, Son, you just keep speaking my name. You might have to live through it. I might not take it away. But I'm going to give you the grace to do what I called you to do. I'm going to tell you, I may have to live with the pain. But God's got his hand on me. I'm not stopping now. I speak Jesus over myself. I speak Jesus. I'm telling you, some of you need to speak Jesus this morning over your prayer. Problem. Sing it, son. If you want to speak Jesus, you need to step out this morning. Speak the name of Jesus. It's up to you. Over every I speak heart Jesus over every heart and every mind that's here. Come on. Come on, sister.